Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parsaraman. Your years of experience, your in-depth understanding, and your ability to present the subject so intrigue in a such uh, such an interesting way has been really nice. May I please request Mr. Anchit Gupta to address the next topic of the technical session, value creation by private equity. Mr. Anchit Gupta has over seven years of experience in private equity and management consulting in India. In his current stint as the director of Samara Capital, he has been instrumental in investing in emerging Indian companies across sectors. Over to you, Mr. Gupta. Thank you. <clears throat> when, uh, when I was given the topic value creation by private equity, I was like, shit, why am I going to talk about this? Uh, we have all kinds of thoughts on value creation. Not all of them are unfounded. Uh, but I'll, I'll still try. Uh, what I've attempted to do here is bring in examples, uh, and uh, examples come from our investing life. Uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody here has similar examples, uh, and, and that is the only way to really showcase uh, value creation. In fact, the example Mahesh talked about is in some ways an example of value creation that private equity brings. So, uh, you know, this is a generic slide, but kind of uh, summarizes the three, four areas in which uh, uh, value creation happens uh, at companies with the help of private equity. And, uh, you know, this is very standard. So the first and foremost thing, uh, if I was to use the language that most of you would appreciate, dhanda laoge kya? And, and that's really, uh, you know, the left, left half of this chart, uh, which is business development. There are cases uh, where private equity has been able to directly build businesses by adding revenue uh, or by guiding uh, b management teams to go in that direction to get revenue. It happens. Uh, and, and if that happens, that is probably the most instantly gratifying and rewarding experience uh, that any of you can have. And, and, and uh, increasingly, I would say, over the last five to seven years, private equity is concentrating on that uh, very, very heavily. Uh, and, and this is a question you should ask, but you should ask it in the context of what Dhanpal talked about. Go to the right partner and ask the right question. Uh, if you just go to anybody and ask them, will you get me business, uh, you're, you may, may be quite disappointed. The next three things uh, are things that are very softer and sometimes uh, in the eyes of entrepreneurs unnecessary. Oh, he will get an EY or a KPMG to audit me. Do lakh mein audit ho tha, now I have to pay 10 lakhs. What's the point? He will have a board, board will fly in, I'll have to pay for the tickets, I'll have to do this, I'll have to do that. So, you know, people don't really appreciate the fact that where is the value of, uh, of having a board? Where is the value of having an auditor of international repute? Uh, and, and those are the softer aspects of governance uh, that private equity concentrates heavily on. They're very, very integral uh, to building a business which can sustain 10, 20, 30 years. If you put strong pillars, they may be painful to put, in, uh, uh, put, uh, put on ground uh, to begin with, uh, but they will last you. They will really last you long. Uh, and the related part to it is systems. Oh, we ended up in implementing ERP. We're just a 50 crore company. Why should we spend two crores on ERP? Why should we waste our time doing this? It's taking attention away of my small team from business. That will help. It will ultimately help. And when it helps, it will really help multiply everything that you're trying to do in your business. And the third and the most critical softer aspect is about building teams. This is very, very difficult. It's very difficult. Uh, you know, all of us think we have a great idea uh, when we start a business. Uh, great idea is a first step. The only way you will implement it is if you have a good team. Uh, and getting a good team is an art. Yeah, it is, there is no science to it. Uh, it's not that private equity has perfected that art. We try hard uh, to help, but we bring a lot of experience and we bring a lot of network in helping you build teams. So those, I would say, are the four broad areas uh, where we help in value creation. Uh, what I would do next is just skip through a few slides which talk about real life examples from my investing life of where this has happened. Uh, and, and the idea is just to convert this very verbose and boring slide into some real outcomes uh, for you to see. 
So this is this is an example of a of a company that is into duty free. Uh, uh, at at the airports, you might have seen them. They have a duty free shops at most airports uh, in India. Uh, when when uh, the fund came in in this in back in 2006 7, it was predominantly an India business. Today, it is present in 34 countries. Went from 10 million dollars to 600 million dollars. Of course, the management did it. Of course, the business was a great idea. But there are a lot of things uh, that the private equity investor helps with in geographical diversification. How do I get into a new country? Uh, how do I hire people? I'm an Indian company. I can't hire people outside India. Will they, will they come and work for me? Uh, will, a, uh, will a very good uh, senior manager be willing to work for me in a new country with a new business it starts from zero? Those are areas where private equity comes in. And then you know, these are the kind of outcomes that play out. Second example I'd just uh, take is a, of a company called Iron Mountain. Uh, it's, a, it's a company that makes boxes, records management. You know, all the documents you give to the telecom guys and the banking guys, they manage it. It's a global business. They have a, it's a globally listed, NYSE listed $8 billion company. Their India business is $10 million or was $10 million when we invested in it. Why? Because it's a very fragmented market. Why did they need us? Why did they need any Indian private equity fund? They wanted them to open doors with doing business development. They wanted them to build a team. And they wanted them to do M&A in India, acquire all the small companies, consolidate the market, which is what happened. Now, they could have hired a CEO, or any of you who could be a CEO of such a business could have done this. But then not everybody has every skill set, and not everybody has the time to do everything. So this is, this is another example of acquisitions and consolidations where private equity comes in and adds value. Paradise. Uh, some of you may have heard, but uh, being from Gujarat, I, uh, I, would, I would guess maybe not. But the iconic biryani brand of Hyderabad, 60-year-old, third-generation entrepreneurs running the business. You talk about Paradise Biryani, and everybody knows where it is. They had this one large store uh, in, in, in Hyderabad, which does really well. In 60 years, they didn't go out of Hyderabad. A fund comes in, works with them, gets a management team on board, and there you are. You start growing. And, and the management could have done it. Again, it is a lot of push. It is a lot of support in terms of systems, processes, thinking bandwidth, as well as uh, uh, just hiring people for them to go and execute this on the ground. You know, Another example of getting global businesses back to India. Uh, nutrition was doing very well. Uh, you all would have heard the story of Amway. There's another global multi-billion dollar brand called GNC. Wanted to come into India. There's an Indian company uh, the fund has invested in, which is a pharmacy business. How do you bring the two together? You use the network we all have to go to GNC, sitting out of Minnesota in the US, talk to them, convince them to come to India, and partner with this business. And there, that's an example of business development, getting you real business on the ground at that time. And finally, uh, you know, let me just skip over to this part, because this is the least appreciated and the most difficult, uh, which is about building a team. Uh, we spoke about how Flamingo went from one country to 34 countries. It comes with a very complex team. Uh, and building the, the each and every web of that team is, is not easy. It's, it's very difficult, takes a lot of effort, and you don't get it right in one go. You hire people, they don't work out, you have to move on, hire another person, get the job done. Uh, that is where all of us here, especially those doing control transactions, really uh, uh, spend a lot of our time on. So in a nutshell, uh, you know, we all hope that we bring value beyond capital. Uh, and that is how we justify our existence. Otherwise, we could be investing in public markets. However, it is important for you to see the fit. Every firm has slightly different mindsets, slightly different capabilities and abilities. And you have to see the fit of your business with the fit and the philosophy and the capability of the fund you're going to work with. And finally, do not expect the moon. We are partners. We don't run businesses. So we will only do what we can and in most cases, we are very upfront of it, uh, about it. Uh, in fact, in all cases, we are very upfront about it. But the entrepreneur at the other end should also realize our limitations of where all we can add value and where we cannot. We cannot run the business for you. Uh, we are investing in you for the business 
that is. But we can at the periphery add a lot of value. So I hope with that uh, you know, we've been able to give you some examples of value creation uh, rather than just talk about auditors and board boardrooms and the meetings about that.